So welcome to the Power of Attorney Masterclass for Notaries, the number one Power of Attorney Masterclass for Notary Professionals, because there's no other masterclass teaching Power of Attorneys. Therefore, I am one of this class. So what we're going to do today, today we're going to cover a strong foundation. I think this is one of the biggest uh, problems that notaries are having when it comes to power of attorney, because they do not have a very strong foundation when it comes to this stuff. So my job today is to give you a strong foundation. Therefore, it feels uncomfortable to charge these low prices for POA. The only way I can make you feel uncomfortable charging $50 $65, $75 for power of attorney is because you don't understand what that document is really doing. Okay, so let's get started with that. Let's go dark. I need you to shut off all your devices. We're gonna, we're gonna go through this stuff. I want you to really absorb this information that we're about to go through. Unless you have an emergency and you have kids that are, you know, need your attention or somebody or somebody elderly that may need your attention, you know, you could do that. But if not, let's go dark. Let's let's disappear for the next hour and 15 minutes. Let's disappear from the social media that's trying to get your attention dinging every time. I like Tulsa sent me a message. She's like, I don't check my social media until after six o'clock. For the next three days, shout out to you. <laughs> Getting that discipline in. I love that. So let go over the foundation. First thing I want to do, I want to go over what is a power of attorney? A power of attorney is a legal document that allows one person called the principal to appoint another person the attorney, in fact, or they may call them the agent, to act on their behalf in financial and legal matters. The principal gives the agent legal authority to sign documents, make decisions, and take other actions on behalf of the principal. It is important to note that the principal still maintains control over the decisions that the agent makes on their behalf, unless they did a what is called a durable power of attorney. The durable power of attorney allows the agent to operate on the principal's behalf, even if they become incoherent. So if that person that aid, that principal falls into a coma, that agent can still make moves on that principal's behalf. If they, if dementia starts to take over, Alzheimer's start to take over, they still have authority to handle all of their financial affairs. It's gonna get deep. So buckle up. So day one, what we're going to cover, we're going to cover crafting out your perfect avatar. I want you to understand exactly who your clients are. We're going to learn who are the major players of your power of attorney and how to fill out a power of attorney. That final part, how to fill out a power of attorney, is really going to give you the full scope of how much money is literally being shuffled across the desk right in front of your eyes. And I want you to capture some of that money. Because like I said, it's the changing of the guards right now. Day two, we're gonna cover how to handle inquiries, how to turn skinny deals into profitable ones. You guys should never, never be charging anything less than, to be honest with you, nothing less than $150 for a power of attorney. And that's really cheap. That's really, really cheap because anybody that does a power of attorney has assets. And if somebody has assets, 
<laughs> most likely it's going to be worth more than $150. $150 is like a drop in a bucket for them. And then I'm going to teach you how to understand the customer's journey. What is the next step? Where are they going after they get this power of attorney? What's the next document they're probably most likely going to call you for? There's a whole journey that goes along with this. And then on day three, what we're going to cover all things marketing. I'm going to teach you how to market to these people effectively integrating profit tools and software because we have a lot new software and AI and all of this stuff going on right now. And then we're going to go into the hot seat. The hot seat is where I'm, we're basically going to sharpen your skills. I'm going to ask you to get into the hot seat and I want to see exactly how you're going to answer the phone. We're really going to role play. And I'm gonna throw all kinds of situations at you. I'm gonna be the great customer. I'm gonna be a pain in the ass customer. We're gonna swap and role play with each other. I'm gonna be a difficult customer. I'm gonna throw all kinds of situations and I wanna see how you navigate and then we're gonna sharpen your sword. That way, when you do get one of those phone calls, you know exactly what to do, okay? So from this day forth, you are a family-focused notary practice. You are a family-focused notary practice. This is where we start separating ourselves from every Joe Schmo notary out there in America, in the world. Because if you continue to call yourself a notary public or NSA, what's the difference? The customer wants to know what's the difference. But if the customer says, okay, well, your price is this, how, like what makes you different than the other notary that was only gonna charge me $15? Well, we're a family focused notary practice. We focus on families and making sure that they get the best service possible because these power of attorney documents are no joke. You know that, that's why you're getting one. So let's take a look at what the perfect avatar may look like. What you're gonna notice is that I, I made an extra page It's um, for you guys. This is going to be your worksheet. You can actually print it out. And as you're getting phone calls, I want you to put Roman numeral ones and twos next to it to see where these people are actually falling into place, right? So the first one would be the gender, right? You're going to, this is probably the easiest one because as they call you, you'll be able to hear their voice and, and by their name, you'll know if they're a male or female. Every state is different. So you may notice that more women are calling you to get started with a power of attorney document in the state of California. So knowing this, this will help you craft out your marketing materials so much more effectively. So if I'm getting 80% women, 20% men, now when I create an ad, or a Facebook post, or I'm doing a Google My Business post or anything like that, I'm gonna put a woman on there. If I'm attracting more Hispanics than any other culture, guess who I'm gonna put on these advertisements? Hispanic women. That makes sense? Now the religious belief that, you know, if you could tap, if somehow you can tap into that, now this one, you'll have to do some recon, right? You'll have to run intelligence. And the way you run intelligence is once you're at the customer's house. When you're at the customer's house, you look around. Heck, you're already in their home anyway, right? Look around, see if they got any pictures up there. See if they have the Holy Bible sitting next to their telephone. Or do they have the Holy Quran over there? 
whatever they, they're doing, look around. Maybe they have a picture of Jesus on their wall. Pay attention to your environment. Don't just go in there like an average notary and be like, okay, I'm here to do your notarization. They go in there, they notarize, and then they leave. No recon done whatsoever. They don't know the lay of the land whatsoever. And you're actually in the most intimate setting of that client. You're in their personal home. Take mental note of the things that you have noticed in their house. And then when you get back to your vehicle, write it down on a nice little uh, sketch pad, a little post-it note. Just write it down. No, write down the things that popped up and was the most noticeable for you in that person's home. Wow. Like the last two customers I went to had Harley Davidson sitting in a garage. I wonder if I'm attracting people that like motorcycles. Okay. Same thing with political affiliation. You're not creating any as around political. You're just trying to understand the mentality of your customers. No, I'm not going to say, hey, you know, go, go ahead and create an ad and then you're throwing all these presidents that you don't believe in just so you can make a sale. No, I'm not saying that. What we're trying to do is understand the customer better than they understand themselves. Now we're going to look at geographic locations. Each and every one of you guys know that there are zip codes in your respective city that there are straight up ballers in there. These zip codes, these cities, they must have money to live in those areas. Write down the zip codes if you know them. Or if you already know them by the by the name of it, like, okay, here in Chicago, in Illinois, right? If someone tells me that they live in Flossmore, like, ain't that a crazy name? Flossmore, like, they be flossing and shit. If they tell me that they live in Flossmore, well, I already know there's, these are $750,000 homes and up. People that do well off, they're expecting a price to, they expect the price to be higher just off of their zip code. Just off of their zip code. If a client tells me that they live in Beverly, see, here's the thing. Beverly is in Chicago, right? It's literally in Chicago, but because it's a small pocket of affluent people, they feel the need to let you know that they live in Beverly. They could easily say, yeah, I live in Chicago. But no, they don't say that. They tell you that they live in Beverly. There's a reason why they're telling you that. You're like, no, I've done well for myself. I don't live in Chicago. I live in Beverly, which is located in Chicago. You see what I'm saying? Okay, I want you guys to type in Two affluent areas in your neck of the woods. Jazz, type in two affluent areas in your neck of the woods. Tulsa, same thing. Brandy, same thing. Type in two affluent areas in your, in your state. I want to see the name of those, those places. In the meantime, I'm going to continue. My brother Tech is in the building. What up, Tech? So, yeah, type in. Okay, there we go. Um, so, Brandy said in Florida, she believes is Windmeyer. Windermeyer, right? Okay, this is good. See, look at that. Tulsa agreed with you. Windermeyer and Winter Garden. See what I mean? So you guys know, 
You guys know the affluent areas in your city. Jasmine said Livermore, California, and Pleasanton. You see what I mean? So now, look, I'm arming you guys with, with machine guns now, with the scope and the red infrared beam. Now, when a person calls from Windermeyer, the price went up. The price went up. When they call from Livermore, the price went up. Tech, am I lying? Davenport is a good one. No, these affluent areas. No, these affluent areas. People that worked hard to accomplish the level and status of living that most people would would die for, they want to be treated differently. And money really isn't the thing. But for you, as a business owner, you can capitalize off of that. Now, once you have your list of, okay, all right, I know I have about five of them. I want you to write down, write down five affluent areas in your area. So when you get these phone calls, you know what to do. Okay. Now, the next thing you're going to find out is if they're single, married, or divorced. This is all going to set you up for victory. This will all set you up for victory. You want to find out if they're white collar or blue collar. Why is that important? White collar professionals tend to be a little bit more tech savvy. So when it comes to you uh, sending them a link to their phone for them to book on Calendly for them to get the appointment, it's going to be fairly simple. Blue collar, they may still have a flip phone. They may be like, oh, I don't mess with that technology stuff. Um, hey, can I just pay you when you get here? You'll notice that with a lot of blue collar workers. So you should have a backup for blue collar workers. Now, I preach all the time, get paid first. So if a blue collar worker says, hey, I'm not good on to, you know, with the technology stuff, I still got a flip phone. Can I just pay the notary when they get here? What I want you to do is say, unfortunately, we do not dispatch notaries until the transaction go through. So I can still help you out with that. I'll just take down all your information. And you're just going to take an additional two to three minutes. You're going to open up your Calendly. You're going to start putting in their information. And then you're going to run their credit card on the phone. You're going to get paid first. That's the only difference. I don't want you making exceptions for the blue collar worker because this mf -er decided that he didn't want to learn technology in, in, in the 21st century. All of a sudden, they, they try to stiff you. Or they call you at the last minute and say, oh, we decided to go with somebody else. And you're like halfway over there. You're damn near, uh, your finger is five seconds away from ringing a doorbell and they told you that they decided to go with somebody else. That can only happen when you charge them once you get to the location. Now, here's where it really gets juicy. You want to find out what triggered the event that caused them to buy. 
this is going to be part of the call script, which you guys will get. What triggered the event that caused them to buy? So tell me about the situation. What's going on? Well, my father just had a stroke. He was in ICU for a long time. He just got out. He's in a wheelchair. He can't get to the bank the way he wants to. He wanted to make me his power of attorney. Okay, what triggered the event? A stroke. Stroke victims. Now, there are some hospitals. There are some um, places that deal with many, many stroke victims. Major metropolitan cities have these. That has now become your one of your target markets now. Really? Where, so where did he get his treatment at? Ask them. They're, they're in a mode where they are willing to talk about their situation. Let me tell you why they're in a mode to talk about their situation, because it's stressful. And people are being pulled a million ways, one, to the left, to the right, up, down. They're scattered brain. So they would love to vet, to vent to someone that, that's willing to listen. And you're in a position to gather some high intelligence from that situation. So tell me about the situation. So who did the treatment for your father? Oh, Shirley Ryan. Oh, okay. You write down Shirley Ryan. Well, what did you just learn? Stroke victim. And now you have the location that treated the, the stroke victim. Now you can either reach out to them via phone. You can reach out to them via email or pop up in the location. Heck, you can even ask, who was your caseworker there? Because we would love to help other people. This is after you're done, right? We would love to help other people that may be in a situation like your dad. Is there anybody that you think we can talk to out there in Shirley Ryan? First of all, they, they look at you as a trusted advisor now because you help their family in a crisis, a crisis. This is different. This ain't, a, this ain't a plumber that's coming to fix a leak. You are a notary, a, a family-focused notary practice that came to their home to legalize a document for them to free up funds so they can make their father's life easier. You guys will never be able to charge $50 and $65, $75 for a power of attorney again. Not after, not after this class. What problem were they trying to solve? This is why when you get on these phone calls with them, I need you to listen with both ears. What problem were they trying to solve? Okay, you're looking to get a power of attorney. I get that. Here's the situation that happened. He had a stroke. Okay, I get that too. But why do you need a financial power of attorney? I'm not saying that that's how you ask them because they're, they're going to ramble. Trust me. They're going to just ramble. They're, they're literally going to exorcist throw up on your ass. Just throw, throw up on your ass. Everything that's going up. I just need you to listen with a pen and paper. And if you have a great memory, just register it in the back of your mind. Well, he has not been able to pay his bills since he was hospitalized. We started receiving letters from the mortgage company. It's not like my father don't have the money. He has the money in the bank. He just hasn't been able to get to it. 
So he wants to make me the power of attorney so I can start paying the bills on his behalf. Bingo. That's the problem that they're trying to solve. The mortgage is becoming past due. They're receiving letters and it's po they're possibly going to go into foreclosure if they don't make these payments. The money is there. They just cannot access the money. That's the problem that they're trying to solve. The more problems that they have, the more money you make. I'll repeat that. The more problems that they have, the more money you make, as long as you're willing to solve them. What is the single biggest reason they bought? Now, this is what we call the hot button. In sales, we call it the hot button. When we would sell health club memberships, right? We would, uh, we would do a consultation in the beginning. You know, have you worked out before, blah, 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 and stuff like that. Now we're going to take you on a tour to the health club. We're going to actually put you on a couple of machines. We're going to have you on a treadmill so you can feel the burn and start sweating a little bit. We're going to put you on a couple of uh, machine weights so you can push some weight so you can feel, you know, some of the strength training. And then we come back downstairs and now we're going to deep dive a little bit deeper into that initial consultation. And we'll ask a question. So why are you deciding to come to the health club now? Now, surface, this is surface layer answers, right? Because I want to get into better shape. Because I want to, you know, I want to look better in my jeans. Don't fall for that surface layer answer. Sometimes you have to do a little bit more digging. Okay, is there a reason why you want to fit in the, the better jeans? Well, my best friend is getting married next month. Aha. This is the hot button. This is the urgency that's forcing you to come into the club to start working out. There is a there is a wedding that they want you to attend and you're one of the braid, uh, bride of honor, right? Like, what do they call Bridesmaids. There's a dress that they're gonna want you to put on and you wanna fit that thing like a glove. Bingo, that's the hot button. So you're looking for that single biggest reason why they bought from you. They'll say stuff like, well, we really need to get this done. I have to start paying these bills. That is a hot button. Or those no good family members want to try to tap into his account and they know that he's unable to put up a fight with them. I want to protect him. That is the underlining hot button. Of course, you want to find out how they heard about you because that is whatever marketing channel that, because I'm going to give you guys about like 24, 25 different marketing channels that you can get customers. You, there's going to be probably two to three of them that is getting you 80% of your customers. You want to find out which lead source is producing that much, um, that many clients. And then you want to double up on it. So at the end of every call, you want to say, so how did you hear about us? 
I heard about you guys through Google. I heard about you guys through Notary Cafe. I heard about you guys through Bing. I heard about you guys through Yelp. You want to know, and then you start marking it off. And the one that gets the most attention, that's who you put most of your efforts in. And then you want to find out what big spenders have in common. Because as you're closing these pile of attorney deals, there's the big spenders are going to stick out like a sore thumb. These are the ones that need a third party witness. These are the ones that need you to print out the documents, that need expedited service, that need um, to do a medical power of attorney, financial power of attorney at the same time and possible other documents at the same. You want to find out who these big spenders are and what they have in common. And then once you do that, once you have, have these answers, you're going to do two important things. You're going to speak directly to them. You're going to be upfront about your customer requirements, meaning, of course, we know that they have to have a valid photo ID, right? But you're also going to let them know that the customer, the client must be coherent, right? That if they're doing a power of attorney, they must have a third party witness. If not, you're able to provide one for them. You're going to let them know what your requirements are at this point. You're not going to leave them in control when they're calling you for advice. You're going to advertise to speak directly to them. And then B, you're going to re-engineer the whole sales process because now we're targeting the clients that have the most money. We're still going to get the ones that are paying the $150, $178 for power of attorneys. Yeah, we love those clients as well. But the clients that are spending $400, $500, oh yeah, you got to treat them a little bit different. I want you to look at it this way. You have a, you have a watch store. You sell timepieces, right? One side, you sell Casio watches. And then the other side, you sell Rolex watches. Are you going to treat the person that's buying the Rolex watch the same as the person that's purchasing a $10 Casio watch? That would be foolish to do. This person is willing to spend $10,000, $20,000 for a Rolex watch. And then this person over here is looking to spend ten dollars to $30 for a Casio watch. You cannot treat those people the same. It would be foolish to do as a business owner. And I'll give you another example from real life experience. When we were, when we promoted, um, I used to be a nightclub promoter when I first came to Chicago. We realized very quickly that there were a, there was a group of people that did not want to party with the general, you know, crowd. Yeah, it was okay that they were in the same location. That wasn't a problem. They didn't care that they were listening to the same DJ. That wasn't a problem. But you're telling me that you want me to be on the main floor with all of these regular ass people? Thanks for watching. I hope you got a lot from it. Don't forget to click the link below for my special discounted price.